Welcome to Mr. Excalibur. My name is Arthur, and today we're looking at Ronan Katana's model number nine, which also happens to be one of two of their old Katana models. Now, something I mentioned in a previous video, um, there really is no information out there on really what an old Katana is outside of old, perhaps standing for oversized. In other words, it's uh, not so long as to be what the Japanese call a, a, a great sword, um, but it is essentially almost a, a, an exaggerated um, size of a, a normal katana. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into that in the wrap up at the end. Um, so as per usual, we have um, the unboxing to take a look at how it is, uh, how it came, and then also uh, some footage here from uh, from Matthew Jensen, who tested this thing out pretty extensively. He actually did a destructive test on one of these, and it is impressive what this thing was able to take. Um, and then my own experience is cutting with it, and then we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this up at the end. So let's take a look at that footage right now. So here we are unboxing the uh, Ronin Katana Dojo Pro number nine. Um, one of the nice things about Ronin Katana is and their their packing. You got to admit, and that is they usually double box whenever they send anything to you you have a shipping box on the outside and then this inner box on the inside um, people don't necessarily think of swords as actually being very fragile but in reality there's a lot that is around the sword I guess you could say that actually is very fragile uh, in the case of Japanese swords the sides are actually rather fragile um, little pieces of of styrofoam on the inside sometimes aren't enough. Uh, I've had swords shipped where there was barely anything around them whatsoever. You're actually going to see that in some future reviews. So hats off to uh, Rona Katana for having a, having kind of double boxed their 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 product here. This is actually the first sword that I've ever ordered directly from Rona Katana. The other ones that I have had that you've seen reviewed here, I actually ordered from a distributor, uh, a very well-known distributor. Um, but this was the first one that I got directly from Rona Katana. Um, nice thing to note, as always, um, this may be something you guys may get tired of hearing, but it's, it's worth noting whenever it comes to some of these uh, products that we're, we're looking at and if you're shopping for them this may uh, be something of, of note to you and that is the sword came lubricated um, it was lubricated inside the saya uh, but lubricated nonetheless one of the first things that I first started to realize about this sword was man oh man this thing was heavy solid but heavy let's take a look at the blade a uh, typical no-nonsense blade that uh, we've seen in past Rona Katana models. Um, that's one of the things that we have noticed with, uh, with them before, that straight, very utilitarian blade. Now, here's the thing, though. Some people say, oh, they, you know, that's kind of a cheap, cheap blade. Not at all. In fact, actually quite the opposite. Um, these through hardened blades, these monotempered blades that Rona Katana uh, has put with their swords, both this one and one's past, as you guys will see, are indeed quite tough and do come quite, uh, quite sharp. There's a view of some of the iron fittings that were kind of nice, basic, but nice. Of course, we always have the, uh, the paper cutting test. And, um, and typical of Rona Katana blades, it just shaved away. They do uh, sell these right out of the box awfully sharp. 
Um, and I think that's something important when looking at some of these katanas. You know, not everybody's going to get a Japanese whetstone that costs however many hundreds of dollars and go and start spending hours and hours out there, you know, hand sharpening their katanas. Most people aren't going to do that. They're going to buy them, they're going to, you know, have them sharp right out of the box, and then they're going to play with them and do whatever they're going to do with them. Um, especially something like this and you know as I'm testing right here yeah sharp um, again one of the feelings that I'm really getting with this sword is just how incredibly blade heavy this thing is um, and, and this is in comparison to actually some other Ronin Katana products that I've looked at I'll look at the Saya Saya is very nice it's got a horn throat right there at the opening of the Saya. Um, some nice uh, Sego wrap right around the Saya plug. Uh, you've got the two little eyelets that are uh, simple iron, kind of a flat finish right there on the, the eyelets there. Uh, that was nice. I mean, the, the overall look of this is a typical Ronin Katana look, which is a very good finished look. Uh, it's, it's not a lot you can really complain about there. Um, just immediately when I got this thing out of the box, I was like, wow, this thing's a whomper for a katana. Now, I'm used to heavier swords, but this one was going to be heavy. This is the footage that Matt Jensen did on his on his uh, on his channel, and he kind of goes through some of the aesthetics of the sword first, um, kind of noting some of the same things that I just went through. His picture and his camera works a little bit better than mine, so I hope he doesn't mind uh, me snatching some of his footage right here. But I mean, one of the things that he goes through when looking at this is just that you know this is typical of Rona Katana. I mean, it's it's wonderful how consistent they are and how clean the look is, how solid the build is. And you know, you're you're getting quality quality product. I mean, there's not a lot you can you can complain about that. Now, after this, he went in and do he went and did some uh, kind of typical cutting tests. But what I did was I cut right to where he was really trying to abuse this thing. He started out right away by saying he wanted to break this sword, and here he literally is using it like an axe. Now, if that is not an, an indication as to just, you know, the mass of this thing and how heavy it was, um, I don't know what it is. Here he goes, you know, he's got another sample sword that he was, uh, you know, bashing against. That's the damage it did, so I mean, it does ding. But I mean, his real point here was to just see what it would take before it would break. And here he is just outright bending the thing. Now as he's doing this, he also mentioned uh, the fact that he realized that he was getting some kind of dangerous territory here. Uh, where you've got the potential of, you know, spinning pieces of, of swords, spinning out like helicopter blades, you know, uh, kind of territory. Now. At one point, he takes a break here to show just what kind of damage had been done to the sword at this point. And by the way, just to note down, the blade hasn't broken yet, but a lot of other stuff has. You can see the wood around the tsuka has basically snapped in half. In fact, he shows how it's uh, it's basically beginning to splinter. Um, he's disassembled the sword and kind of showing what the the shock of everything that he's put it through is uh, is causing along some of the aesthetics. Now to be fair, let's be honest here, you put any sword through this, I don't care what it's made of, and I don't care what time period it is, this could have been the genuine article, and it would have taken this kind of, it would not have taken this kind of punishment. Now, in a sec here, we're gonna transition right to the part where I was really interested, where he just takes it into his workshop, and he is literally trying to just break the sword. Forget about using it as a sword. He is just trying to break the blade. He's disassembled it. it. This is just the bare blade. He's got masking tape around it. He's got it in a vise. And he's, you know, wiggle, 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 wiggle in this thing, you know, pinned in a vise. And it's just not breaking. 
This, if anything, is a testament to the heat treating and tempering that Ronan Katana does with their blades. Now he did something similar to this with a Model 14, which is the 30 inch Katana. It broke a little sooner than this one. Now at this point, he's just said, screw it, I'm just going to try and grind in a, a weak point this blade so I can finally just break it. I think he was kind of getting tired of this thing. <laughs> it, had, uh, it, it had taken him to task, uh, so to speak. And so here he, you know, he's wiggling back and forth and, you know, you guys can, can see the inevitable here. He's whacking it, he's, he's weakened it. Uh, you can see the metal literally curling around. I mean, it's just unbelievable. He takes a pipe around the thing to get some more torque on it and finally, there it goes. Ping! Yeah, finally broke the thing. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what greater testament you can have on uh, a sword to show you just how much the thing will take um, as this test. So there you have it guys, that's what you can expect with the blade on, on this particular sword. This was my experience with the model number nine uh, Dojo Pro Katana from Ronin Katana. This is their O Katana, their oversized Katana. Um, this is my very weak attempt at sheathing, resheathing it, you know, showing some kind of cut. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> just starting, just starting. But I mean, I've had a lot of experience with these things. I just decided finally I, I really need to lock down and actually start learning an, an actual kata with uh, with these swords rather than just swinging them around like some you know English broadsword um, alright so my overall impression as I was swinging this thing around as I mentioned when I was unboxing this thing was just how incredibly tip heavy it was which is really interesting considering in the very same video uh, that I took some clips from in, in Matt Jensen's video. He mentions that out of the Okatanas that he's used, this is the lightest and best balanced one he's ever he's ever swung around. At least out of the three that he mentions at the end of the video. Take a look at that at the bottom of the comments here and watch the whole thing. It was one of his earlier videos, but he does draw a comparison with some other Okatanas that he had had. And, you know, yeah, the thing cuts. The thing cuts like a lightsaber. But just by the end of this cutting session, I was exhausted. Now, I have found other Okatanas to, to, be, um, to be a lot easier to move. Although, I do have to admit, overall, the design of the Okatana, at least this particular one, just seemed just way too tip-heavy. Um, the, other, the one thing that I, I, I think that Ronan probably could do to negate that some is, as I mentioned um, uh, previously, or actually will mention a little uh, in a few minutes, they should either, you know, extend the handle or put a bohe in it somehow to lighten the blade just a little bit. It's not like it's going to weaken the thing much. Um, you know, the way they've been heat treating and tempering these things, they could probably afford to put a bohe in, and it's not going to weaken the blade all that much. Although I know there's someone out there, when they just heard that, they're probably going to argue with me. But that being the case. So I tried the uh, empty bottle test and um, tried it once and tried it twice and all it did was just kind of bounce away and at this point I gotta admit I was getting tired I I really was getting tired and by the time I got to the uh, TV box test despite this thing how heavy it was I just wasn't able to plow the thing in very far and you know I'm looking at this kind of going wait a minute this heavy katana with how sharp it is you're telling me you didn't go in as far as it did I'm, wait a minute I'm, I'm gonna go back here and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try this again <laughs> Um, so I give it another 
an, an, another college try. Now, mind you, this box is baked out in the sun after getting wet, which means cardboard tends to get a little harder. It's also filled with a bunch of heavy styrofoam supports for the TV that used to be in there. So um, it's not just an empty box, but here we go one more time, womp. And um, it did more impact damage than anything else rather than actual do, uh, actual percussive damage. So here we are taking a look at it and um, yeah, it just, it, it just smashed it more than anything else. So kind of a wrap up here as we always do and this is just kind of a more how-to lesson when it comes to these swords and it doesn't matter if this thing's Filipino, Chinese, Native American, European, I don't care what it is. The fact of the matter is it's a carbon steel blade. Carbon steel blade plus water plus just a little bit of time and you'd be surprised at how little time it actually needs equals rust. And uh, once you rust these things, it is the dickens of trying to get it on. In fact, um, trying to get it off, I mean. Um, in fact, just recently, this very same sword, um, I was uh, actually putting up for sale. And uh, I noticed that, I guess, after this process, hadn't got quite it, it uh, clean enough. And sure enough, there were a few little spots. Luckily, I was able to rub them out, but um, that'd be a lesson. These things do rust if you don't take care of them. of the RK number nine, uh, Ronin Katana number nine, their O Katana, is that it seems as though they took the number 14, which I have down here with the red Saya. This was their 30 inch Katana. And as you guys can see, the Tsuka length is exactly the same. And what you can tell here is that they really didn't change anything despite the fact that you've got a longer blade here. Um, so my impression was, and what I wanted to show here, was that they added a lot of steel at the end of the sword and yet did not, uh, did not account for any longer handle length. Um, as you guys heard in the, the footage I did for both the, when I first got out of the box and then when I was cutting, this thing was excessively heavy. Um, I don't know if they really just kind of jumped on the old Katana bandwagon and decided, okay, let's just keep the same design, just make it a little longer, 
or what the deal was. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. So as you guys can see, this thing is a beast. Um, it, it really was quite heavy. Um, here's the interesting thing about all this, and that is it's built just like other arcade models. Uh, Rona Katana really makes a solid build on their, on their katanas. Um, I didn't notice any difference uh, between that and the one I did before, the, the number 14, which you guys just saw a minute ago. Um, it really was a very, very solid built sword. Um, however, my overall impression that it is, it's not a very well designed sword. Um, so, you know, between design and build, there's, I think there was a bit of a disconnect. Um, in other O katanas that I have seen, both the ones you guys have seen me review before and uh, other ones that have come up, whenever I've seen these, you know, much longer bladed katanas, what I've noticed is they do one of two things. They either uh, put a fuller in, a bohi, which lightens the blade, or they extend the handle length. They make a longer tsuka. Sometimes both. Um, in the previous review you guys saw of the Ryujin Okatana that I did, that's what they did. They not only put a fuller in, but they also extended the length of the handle. And here, not only did Arcane, you know, leave the handle length the same length, but they've also got a solid blade, which is puts a lot of weight on the end of the sword. Um, the other thing that I found, and this was not very typical of Ron Katana, but blade rattle, or sire rattle which is not very typical for them. The one that I have is very solid and uh, didn't have that experience, but that was the case here. So um, after all that, uh, you guys have seen, um, just to kind of review the footage you guys saw of Matthew Jensen, that footage really is testament, not necessarily to the, the, the design of the sword, but more along the lines of Ronan Katana's heat treating and tempering of their 1060 blades that they put on all of their katanas. It really was amazing what he had to put that thing through in order to actually get it to break. Um, that was impressive. I've, I've never seen him ha actually have to do that much work in order to break a blade, so that's a good testament. But in my opinion, at the end of the day, if you are looking for an oversized katana, an O katana, I think there are some better options out there for you. Um, and it has nothing to do, again, with Ronin Katana's build, it has to do with their design. And I think that's where this one really fell short for me. Um, so again, if you're if you're looking for an O katana specifically, because these are you know they really are in a class by themselves because of their size, I think there probably are some better options out there for approximately the same amount of money. Um, Rona katanas usually sell you know they they hover around that. Uh, 300 plus dollar mark but under the $400 mark so they're somewhere you know in there um, so while it, it still maintains that you know that nice solid Rona Katana feel um, it fell short a little bit on the design as far as an O Katana so I hope this has been informative for you please subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you next time Bye for now.